Hello and welcome to this Blender tutorial where we're going to learn how to make a character interact with an object uh, multiple times. And by multiple times, I mean something like what you see here, where our character Rain here leans down, she picks up the ball, she lets go of the ball, when she throws it, she catches it again, and then one more time she's going to uh, give up control of the ball. We're going to learn how to keyframe this kind of animation here. So to start off with, um, you can see the ball has a lot of keyframes, and those have been mostly generated by Blender. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of those keyframes so that we start off with a, a blank slate with the ball here, and now we've got our animation with rain and uh, no ball interaction. So uh, here's what we need to do we're going to go to the first point at which rain should interact with the ball and we can see here that that is basically frame 30 and after frame 30 her hand should at least be pushing on it and kind of controlling it a little bit so what I'm going to do here <clears throat> with the ball selected I'm going to go over to my object constraints and I'm going to add a child of constraint to the ball and the object that the child of constraint is going to point toward is going to be Rain's rig. So rig Rain, and then the particular bone, uh, choosing, choosing an armature allows us to choose an individual bone. So I'm going to search for hand, and I can see that her hand IK controller is right here for her left hand. So I'm going to, going to select that, and you can see the ball kind of flips out of uh, position. So we need to clear the inverse and then set the inverse and it goes back into position and from there the ball is controlled all the time. Now that's not really quite what we want. We want the ball to be laying on the ground. Um, and right now she just controls the ball all the time whether she should have it or not. So what we need to do is set some limitations for this current interaction. So before frame 30 we don't really want her interacting with the ball so this little slider here this influence slider for our constraint I'm going to keyframe that and then I'm gonna go back to frame 29 and I'm going to say okay at this point we don't want you to have any influence we're gonna turn that influence all the way down to zero and normally I would have to hit uh, the little button over here to keyframe again but you can see I have auto key enabled that's this little recording uh, button here that's currently blue that uh, basically means when I change something it automatically puts a keyframe in. For certain animation scenarios I find that pretty handy. So now uh, the ball sits there on the ground until that influence is turned up by keyframe and Rain now has the ball and I'm going to go until she should toss it and I can see that that is right about frame 80. So I'm not going to turn the influence off at this point. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bake my animation to this point. So I'm going to tap F3 and search for the word bake. Or you can see the location in here, object, animation, bake, action. So I can go to the object menu, go down to the animation submenu, and I can click bake action here. And it's going to ask me what you want to bake and I'm going to say I want to bake from frame 30 all the way through frame 80 and I want to check this box visual keying and what that does is that basically says I realize I haven't actually done anything to animate the ball other than put a constraint on it so we're going to uh, we're going to make keyframes of whatever is visually happening to the ball and that will translate the effects of this constraint into keyframes. I'm going to clear the constraint out and then um, later on we will use this checkbox overwrite current action but currently we won't because we're creating a new action. This bake action makes a new action for the ball. So I'm going to click OK. You can see that I now have no constraint on the ball and I have a bunch of keyframes for the ball. It's behaving the same way. Whoop, I'm moving my keyframes. It's behaving the same way up until frame 80, at which point it just stays put. 
Okay, so now I want her to toss the ball in the air and I want her to catch it and I have her catching action right about here at frame 110. So I'm going to keyframe that ball into position and remember I have auto key on so when I move this ball it creates a new keyframe automatically for me. And I'm just kind of going to examine that from all sides and I think that looks like a good position. Okay so the ball is in position now and we need it to reach a high point. We need it to get tossed up. Luckily since I've animated the beginning and the end uh, any movement that it should have in X and Y is already solved. So now we just need to move it in Z. And I'm gonna say, let's put it way up there. Uh, let's put it right about there. And you'll notice that when she tosses this it looks funny. So she tosses it and it doesn't really look very convincing. That's not a very convincing toss. And the reason for that is by default Blender does this ease in and ease out bell curve behavior in terms of its speed. So the ball is leaving your hand and it's actually starts slower and then speeds up and then comes down and slows down before she catches it which is not realistic behavior for a ball. So we need to have a look at our graph editor here and kind of fix that behavior. So let's let's look at the ball and let's look at its Z location. I'm going to turn off these other channels just so that I don't have any confusion. I'm actually not using any scale keyframes so I'm going to select all of those and delete them. Just kind of get them out of the mix. Okay and here you can see we have all these uh, keyframe every frame until the tossing action happens here and um, Funny enough, this uh, this actually isn't on a bell curve right now. It's just um, interpolated in a linear way. So we need to change that interpolation, and we'll actually put the bell curve in temporarily. So we'll go to our key menu, go to interpolation mode. We'll change that from linear to Bezier. And now you can see that bell curve that I was describing that I thought we had going on there and it still looks a little wrong. It actually looks a little better than linear to me and probably looks a little better because it does slow down at the top now. And this is actually a pretty good interpolation over here because you can see like the speed that it had when she was bringing it up on her hand that continues and then tapers off. So I'm actually not really going to mess with that but whoop. but by default Let's see, I've got proportional editing on, that's why that was... By default you might see something like this, and then it does slow down going out of her hand. So we want to keep roughly that same kind of line so that it looks like it, um, like it's preserving its momentum. And then right here, I need the ball to continue to... It slows down as it reaches its peak, and then it will accelerate into her hand. So I'm going to break this little connection here because I don't want, oh, actually that's already, that's already kind of broken, but I'm going to free this um, anchor point. I'm going to tap V on the keyboard or else I can go to key and go to handle type and click free. And that allows me to move the end of this, the handle on this side of the anchor point without influencing the other side. I think this anchor point was already free, but I wanted to show you how to do that anyway. So now it kind of accelerates and then it just plops right into her hand. So let's see what that looks like. And I'm a lot happier with that. Plop. Okay, so at frame 110, she should once again have influence over the ball. So we've keyframed up to that point. And now I'm going to go to the ball. I'm going to once again add a child of constraint. I'm going to choose the rain rig again in the same hand. IK hand L. Clear the inverse, set the inverse, 
and of course that messes up everything before it because we haven't set when the influence should be available. So I'm going to keyframe that influence here. We can actually put away the graph editor now and I'll change that back into a timeline just so I get the playback controls here. And then at frame 109 I'm going to turn that influence all the way down. So now this is what that looks like. So she's got control of the ball again. She's going to look at it and she's going to have this realization this is the ball that killed my father. So basically until about frame 300 she should continue having the influence on the ball and then we can see her fingers she's going to drop it. So I'm going to bake this action again and this time I'm going to check the box overwrite current action. Now that sounds like it's going to overwrite what we previously did with all these keyframes here but uh, maybe a better name for that would be add the new keyframes to the current action. So I'm going to click bake action and I'm going to choose my keyframes. We're going to go from frame 110 all the way to frame 300 and we're going to overwrite the current action and it's just going to add our keyframes in. Okay, and it cleared out our object constraint again. You can see now that she bends down, she grabs the ball, she tosses the ball, she's got it in her hand and she's going to let go of the ball here. So I'm going to say it's going to land, let's say 45 frames later, I'm going to have it land maybe right here. And I'm going to use kind of a, I lied, I'm going back to the graph editor, I'm going to use kind of a little cheat here. Go to the graph editor, we're going to select the Z location for that ball here and we're going to choose these two keyframes and we're going to choose an interpolation mode of bounce. You see what that looks like. Bonk, bonk, bonk. And that's kind of nice. So I don't have to deal with that. I don't have to even worry about it. But I am going to kind of make the letting go process a little more precise here. You can see that doesn't look right. Let's keep that ball in her hand. So I'm just going to manually make a few frames here. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Oh, and the interpolation mode between these frames should not be bounce. Let's just do a Bezier interpolation there. And I erased our bounce from the end, so let's go back and fix that now. There we go. And she drops the ball. Okay, and uh, if you wanted two characters to be interacting with the same object, it actually works the exact same way. Um, but if I were, um, when I choose, if I were putting a child of constraint back on the ball, I would just choose the other rig, the other character's rig, instead of the rain character's rig. So that's how you have a character interact with an object um, multiple times both taking and giving up control. I hope this is helpful. Have a good day.